You are so beautiful. Oh my God. Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, welcome, welcome to the party. I'm Vicky and on this channel, we talk all about fitness, nutrition, becoming our best selves and living our best lives. In this video, we will be talking about Protein. I get asked this question almost on a daily basis, especially on Instagram. People ask how much protein should I be having a day? How much protein do I need for muscle gain? So in this video, I'm going to break it all down for you. I'm going to give you a formula and we're going to talk about some facts. Okay, some protein facts. So before we get into this video, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell, and go ahead and comment something in the comment section down below. Tell me a fun fact about yourself. I wanna get to know you guys a little bit better. So a good amount of protein is absolutely essential if you are trying to grow muscle, if you're using weights and you're trying to grow that booty, but it's not just for muscle growth. Protein is so important for so many other functions in your body, for your organs, for your tissues, your skin, your nails, your hair. Protein fuels your energy, helps carry oxygen throughout your body, and protein helps you create antibodies to fight illnesses and infections like the Rona. Point is, you need it. So how much to eat really all depends on your goals. In the US, the current recommended daily allowance, also known as the RDA, is around 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram. That's around 0.36 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Now this is literally a minimum. This is the minimum that a sedentary person who is not active should be having. In reality, if you are an active person or if you're using weights or if you work out, that number should be much, much higher. So how much is the ideal number of protein to have? And I have the formulas for you right here. So if you are an endurance trained individual, that means that you do mostly cardio, body weight stuff, hit, you're an athlete in the sense of like you're, you run, you play soccer, you play a sport, you dance, etc. The ideal amount to have is 2 to 1.4 grams per kilogram of body weight. That's around 0.5 to 0.64 grams per pound. Now, if you are a strength trained individual, that means you're using weights like dumbbells or you're going to the gym or any kind of resistance to grow your muscle, it actually should be anywhere from four to two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. That's around 0.64 to 0.91 grams per pound. At 130 pounds, if you do more like endurance based training, that is between 71 and 83 grams of protein Per day. If you are lifting weights or using any kind of resistance, that is between 83 and 115 grams of protein if you are at 130 pounds. Now, obviously, you're gonna take these numbers and you're gonna apply this formula to your own body weight. And as you can see, there's kind of a big range here, like it's anywhere from 85 to 115. That all depends on your body and it can vary from day to day. Like, you don't have to hit that exact amount every single day, it's more of just like an average you know, when you look at it on a weekly basis. I also need you to understand that protein should not make up most of your diet. Protein should be around 30% of your diet. So 30% of the calories that you eat in a day should come for protein. The rest should be carbs and fats. As a matter of fact, around half of your calories should come from carbs. Like carbs are so, so important. And you can give give or take like 10%. Like that's anywhere from 40 to 60%. But people like demonize carbs, especially in the fitness world. And it literally makes no sense because carbs are so important like to give you energy and to fuel your muscles and for so many functions. I have a whole video dedicated to carbs and my love for carbs. So if you're interested in hearing more about that, you can click on this video. Most of your protein should be coming from the foods that you eat on a daily basis. Now, I know we're not gonna be out here measuring exactly how many grams of chicken we're having with every meal. So I'm gonna give you some examples of some protein-rich foods and how much grams of protein each thing has. So for example, eggs, eggs have around six grams of protein per egg. So if you're having two eggs or even three eggs for breakfast, you can multiply each egg by six and that's already how much protein you're getting just from eggs. That's why so many fitness people eat eggs so much. Like it is such an easy <laughs> source of protein. Next up, we have got beans. So this is for my vegans, vegetarians out there because I know beans are like one of the best protein sources for you. So around 20 grams of protein in a cup of cooked beans. That is actually a really, really good amount. And one of my favorite beans are garbanzo beans. Oh, it's chickpeas. Garbanzo is in Spanish, but chickpeas are amazing, especially if you roast them in the oven and they're nice and crunchy. Woo! Okay, anyway, next we've got cheese. That's right, I love cheese, okay? I'm so sorry if you're lactose intolerant. Like, if I was lactose intolerant, I would just say 
pocket, it's worth it. But cheese has around seven grams of protein per slice. Milk, eight grams of protein, one cup. One cup of chopped chicken has 38 grams of protein. Now you see why so many like fitness people are eating chicken all the damn time. It's just like chicken is boring. Honestly, chicken is my least favorite amount of protein. We've got pork, a three ounce serving is around 23 grams of protein. And then we've got salmon, which is my favorite. Like I'm 100% a seafood gal, I love seafood. But a three ounce serving of salmon is 18 grams of protein. But like a three ounce serving of salmon is nothing you can easily eat too. And there are so many amazing healthy fats, omega-3s, salmon is just amazing. Like I try to have a uh, cooked salmon at least once or twice a week at least. Now, I know that most of us are not going to be sitting here counting how many grams of protein we're getting in each meal because ain't nobody got time for that. A good rule of thumb is to make sure that at least two of your meals in a day are protein rich. Now, protein rich doesn't mean that the whole meal is protein. It just means that at least 30% of what's on your plate is a protein source. Now, I do use protein supplements just because they make it a lot easier and more convenient to hit my protein numbers, especially if I'm having a lunch. Especially if I'm having a lunch that's very like carb heavy, like if I'm having pasta or I'm having a big salad, I'll have some protein for dessert. As a matter of fact, someone just posted in the Facebook group about the blueberry white chocolate protein bar. That one is part of my athlete series with Women's Best. But they said about how I tasted like a candy bar, that they were like, um, I kind of feel guilty eating this because it tastes like I'm eating candy. Girl, do not feel guilty, okay? It tastes like a candy bar, but it has 20 grams of protein and it's just so good for you. It's got fiber. It just tastes so delicious. Like you just have to try it to know what I'm talking about. Everybody is obsessed with this bar. But this one is actually really convenient because there's no preparation. You just take the bar and you go. And then I've got my protein pina colada, which is great in the mornings, especially if you're looking for something refreshing to have in the mornings. So I make it with milk, but you can make it with milk or with water. And um, this is also a great post-workout shake so after my booty and leg workouts i always make sure to get a nice source of protein just so that my muscles like get hit with that protein right away so the booty can get bigger faster most of your protein should be coming from real food so like 80 to 90 percent of your protein intake should be from regular food and supplements can be like the rest 10 to 20 percent of that but you should not be having a protein shake for breakfast lunch and dinner and by the way protein is not just used for muscle growth it's also really helpful when you are trying to lose weight or lose fat when you're in a calorie deficit something that tends to also go along with the fat is muscle but making sure you get a good amount of protein will help prevent muscle loss from happening as much and also protein keeps you feeling full for quite a long time so the protein shake is a great snack that let's say you make it with water it's only 120 calories and it will keep you feeling full and actually any protein rich food will keep you feeling pretty full which is great especially if you struggle with snacking or feeling hungry all the time that is pretty much the spiel on protein hopefully you remember the little formula i showed you in the beginning and just remember that this is basically ballpark figure numbers the world is not going to end if you're off by a few grams or you can't meet a certain number. It's just something to keep in mind, like a guideline to follow. But if you just focus on at least two meals a day being kind of protein rich and just getting as much as possible while still eating your carbs and your fats, okay, very important, you should be good. And remember, protein is not the only thing that's gonna make your muscles grow. You also have to challenge your muscles and work out and use resistance so that they are challenged and they grow. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you learned something, okay? And if you haven't subscribed yet, what is you doing? Hit that subscribe and follow along on the gram. Um, I have two Instagrams, okay? This one's more like my personal Instagram and this one's more just based on like fitness and workouts. So you can follow me on both and we can be friends, okay? And I hope you have a beautiful day.